James St. Patrick, who also went by Ghost, an intelligent, calculated, yet ruthless drug dealer. I'm not afraid to die. And I'm not afraid to kill you. He undergoes many tough decisions, balancing his criminal enterprise and legitimate businesses whilst maintaining his fragile relationship with his family. A precise and determined criminal who left no stones unturned, even if that meant making assumptions leading to the death of innocent lives. Despite being such a sophisticated character, he makes multiple crucial mistakes, where in this video we'll be discussing the tragic character arc of James St. Patrick. Let's go back to how it was before you left us for Angela. I loved Breeze. But he got in my way, son, okay? So I had to get One rid of him. last chance, like you said you did with Breeze, but... You're in the way. You're in the way of my future, like you said he was in the way of yours. Ain't that what you said? In the way of your future, right? No. Disclaimer. This video will only cover seasons 1 to 4. Part 2 will cover seasons 5 to 6. From young, he was raised by his father, where he owned his own nightclub, which later inspired James to open one himself. Later down the line, James would meet and befriend Tommy after helping him with bullies in school. Further down the line, his father was killed after reporting a couple drug dealers for harassment. With no parental figure, he moves in with Tommy. And this is where James's criminal journey really begins. They sold drugs on the corner for Kanan and Breeze, who at that time were like mentors, showing them the ways of the street. I was in the streets at the school when I was 11. How'd you meet my dad? He was in the gang with me, kid. He a D-boy from way back. He ain't just moved shit, he was one of the baddest motherfuckers on the block. Shortly after, James would quickly gain the alias Ghost for disappearing before the police could spot him. He would also meet his first love, Angela, who would also play an important character later down the line. After working for Breeze, James planned on killing him. Breeze was simply too irrational, which led to bad situations for them. With Breeze dead, Kanan became the boss and had Tommy and James under his wing. As a young adult, James would go on and marry Tasha after things between him and Angela didn't work out. Tasha insists James should kill Kanan just like he did with Breeze to become his own boss. However, James saw Kanan almost as a big brother, so they came to the conclusion of framing Kanan for possession of drugs, leading to a 10 year sentence. This leads him to his first mistake. James's ambition and ego led to him betraying not only one, but two of his mentors, and was blind to believe Kanan would even be suspicious of him. We will soon see how this was one costly mistake. With no one in his way, he proceeds to expand his enterprise with Tommy, where they would use their saved up money into legitimate businesses, such as parking lots, laundromats, and Truth, a nightclub owned by James. All the work from working the corner for Breeze and Kanan, it brought us here. You know, for two knuckleheads that grew up like us, Tommy, to make it in the city, man, ain't no small shit. Kanan had his suspicions on James for setting him up. However, James still believes Kanan doesn't suspect anything of him. So Kanan hired a woman who went by Pink Sneakers to destroy James's empire. I want Ghost dead before I get out. Pink Sneakers would hire a small-time thief, Miguel, to steal James's money. This now leads into Power Season 1, where he and Tommy would have Miguel and his fiance in the basement of the nightclub. Pink Sneakers later assassinates one of Ghost and Tommy's associate named Anibal, alongside stabbing Ruiz, one of Ghost's distributors. Ghost and Tommy are now confused on who the perpetrator could be. With no fingers to point, he seeks advice from Kanan who he still trusts at this point. Kanan calls Ghost and feeds him false information, saying it was the RSK leader, Rolar, who had hired Pink Sneakers. He was right about Rolar. Little nigga put up a hundred thou for anybody to help Lincoln with an out of town hitter. Said he wanted top of the line, no mistakes. Take down your own network. Rolar was a good and trustworthy ally of Ghost, as he had mentored him in his early days. Despite this, he still pulls the trigger. 
We can really see that Ghost was willing to do whatever it takes to protect his operation even though there was no certainty of Rolla betraying him. With Pink Sneakers still around, she fires shots towards James in his own nightclub, but misses hitting Tommy's girlfriend, Holly. Not only is this bad for family, but for the business too. Remember Angela? Well, after years, they finally reunite and problems with Angela begin to arise. Tasha caught James meeting her and got jealous, crumbling their trust and marriage. But not only this, Tommy would find out that she works for an attorney who is working with the FBI, tracking down the infamous ghost. This makes Angela a massive liability to everyone, so Tommy tells Ghost to kill her, but Ghost couldn't bring himself to, displaying another weakness. He wasn't willing to take any risk with Rola but when it came to Angela, he allowed his love to blind him and doubled down continuing his affair, taking her to Miami to invest into another nightclub. Which points me to his second mistake, his selfishness. Ghost is willing to jeopardize his family and business over his affair, which is a recurring theme that James undergoes throughout the seasons. Whilst in Miami, he would find pink sneakers, where in her last dying breath she lets him know it wasn't Rolar who hired her, leaving the only logical person to be Kanan. Rola, Dime, Dime. Can't take on that. Rola. Rola. You don't bother me. No. After his trip to Miami, he goes back to New York where all the gangs were at truce. However, Kanan had different plans. After he was released from prison, he immediately makes moves with Tommy, who still at this point has no idea that Ghost and Kanan are enemies. Tommy and Kanan get into a confrontation with Q-Dubs, the cousin of Rolar and the new leader of the RSK gang, where Tommy and Kanan will shoot him after an altercation turning south. Yes. This ultimately led to Kanan replacing Q-Dubs territory, making himself a player in the drug game. James wanted out of the game to finally become the legitimate businessman he always dreamt of. However, it was easier said than done. Ghost's supplier, also known as Lobos, would blackmail Ghost to continue working for him. Ghost agrees but shortly hires a hitman on Lobos when he's in prison. However, the hit fails and now Lobos wants Ghost dead. After this, Ghost hires multiple bodyguards for protection as Lobos would go on and orders Tommy to kill Ghost. In return, he would get to become the biggest distributor in New York City. I want us to work together. Music to my ears. But first, I need you to do something for me. Kill Ghost. Tommy ultimately remains loyal and teams up with Ghost where they would eliminate Lobos for good. With no use for bodyguards, James would release them and finally get to leave the game. However, whilst he was so focused on Lobos, he was completely unaware of who was around him. His bodyguard turned out to be Milan, a Serbian drug lord who now knows the ins and outs of his operation. He blackmails him to stay in the game, but things wouldn't last long as Milan would find himself cornered by Ghost and his men. But as we've already seen so far, Ghost can't get a glimpse of breath before something tragic happens. Ghost had to deal with enemies, family, business, and now, Greg Knox, an FBI agent who is closely monitoring Ghost. He managed to get Ruiz to wear a wire and become an informant to gather evidence on the kingpin. However, Ghost would find out and have Ruiz killed. As Tommy kills Ruiz, Ghost breaks into Greg's apartment to discard any evidence Greg was building up on him. However, doing so left his fingerprints around his apartment. Now this wouldn't be an issue as James didn't commit any major crimes other than breaking in. However, later Greg would be found dead in his apartment and because of James's fingerprints, he is the prime suspect for the murder. In season 4, James spends most of his time in jail for a crime he didn't commit. However, problems still arise, not only within jail, but outside too. His businesses are at risk, his family needs him, but first he has to deal with a corrupt US Marshal, Clyde Williams. After an altercation gone too far, James brutally beats him. He gets away with it after framing another inmate for the murder. 
whilst Angela discovers evidence that Ghost was actually innocent of the crime and is later a free man. But for now, sir, you can go home. But now Ghost faces more issues with a shady councilman, Rashad Tate, and now Kanan once again. Kanan had kidnapped Tariq, holding him for ransom. But after things went too far, Kanan would change his mind at the last second, saving Tariq's life and sparing James out of love. Tariq would get into more trouble, this time though with Ray Ray, a corrupt cop who has unfinished business with Tariq. After escaping, his sister Reyna intervenes, exposing Ray Ray's identity, but things take a turn for the worse and he shoots Reyna in the chest. This is where I believe James becomes completely unhinged and feels like his family is torn apart. Not only was this tough for James, but for Tariq too. After witnessing the murderer kill his sister, he seeks revenge and kills Ray Ray. And that is a wrap for seasons 1 to 4. If this video does well, I'll be doing a part 2 of seasons 5 to 6 itself, focusing more particularly on the downfall of James. That being said, if you do enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and comment down below what other characters you would like to see.